I think the moment that we've all been waiting for, or at least I know this man up there on the west side of Cleveland has been patiently waiting all night to be a part of this. Let's welcome in Andy Jardy for a Jardy party here since it is 1 a.m. That's right, and we're still doing the thing. Andy, you've been basically scouring through the Twitters. You've been watching our streams all night, and you've been putting together like some compilations of some lists. Let's begin with some, uh, some cool things that you saw tonight. Well, if you think the Jardy party is impressive, I can only imagine the party going on in Crestline tonight because the streak is over. They've what? snapped their 29 game losing streak with a 44 27 win at Buckeye Central. First win since November 1st of 2020. Shout out to Crestline for getting the big dub tonight. Love yeah, go Bulldogs. Yeah, I taught it, over right? there a few years ago. They own a special place in my heart, and I, I know it's been a struggle. Kids have been moving out of that place year in, year out, going to schools like Colonel Crawford over at Galleon, and I'm told they actually got a transfer in from Lexington, and he went off tonight for over 200 <laughs> yards, so it's about time the Bulldogs get a little bit of juice. It was nuts. They had a chance, too, to, like, run out the clock, and they were just chucking the ball downfield, just going for the win. It's fantastic. Kudos to them. I know that that's just been a miserable thing to be a part of, a, a losing streak going that long, that many years. But to finally get in back into the win column is just, it's, it's so special. I'm so happy for all of them over there. And speaking of streaking, Marion Local, who I think you mentioned on your broadcast tonight too, Brian, they never lose. They won their 49th straight game tonight, 45-6 oh. over a team out of Indiana. And uh, Travis, is, is Travis as happy as he can be tonight with the K-Mac flexing its muscles here tonight, going 6-2 and two on the night, just really showing that they might be the best conference down there? I don't know. What are we Ooh. thinking? I praise that. He's actually, the sun's not even out, and he's got his gun out right now. So I, <laughs> he's definitely, he's flexing for the K-Mac all night. Yeah, and a rough night for the OCC N10 combined going 4-11. Uh, and 11, uh, Struggled here tonight in week one. Some of these teams trying to kind of figure things out here a little bit uh, to start the year. But one team that really kind of showed who they can be, Ontario, very impressive. Getting down early in a rivalry game to Lexington, 14 nothing. They rattle off 31 unanswered points to come back and win that thing, 31-14. Uh, to 14. And then uh, love to celebrate milestones and looking around uh, Ohio and anywhere else. Uh, Hawken up here in Geauga County. Coach Mark I. Marino. Coach I gets career win number 200 as Hawken wins 42 over Rhodes. And it, it, if you had to guess, do you know Hawkins' mascot, Brian? Ooh, Hawkins, Hawkins, Hawkins. Uh, that sounds like a volcano to me. No, uh, it's actually in the name. It's in the name. They're the Hawk and Hawks. It's just ah, you know, it's perfect. It, <laughs> too easy. How'd I mess that up? I, I was hoping maybe it would be like a Vecna or something. Maybe, maybe they just like switched it up after all the popularity. But that's yeah, a right. Hawkins, like, yeah, totally. Different story. Like, yeah, they're like the Hawk and Demogorgons or something. Yeah, that'd have been even better. Been <laughs> all right. What else do you see? Any, any other top headlines that really caught your eye? Those were kind of the top headlines that I saw going around uh, Ohio uh, football here in week one. I'm sure we'll have more as the season progresses and the storylines kind of develop. But uh, yeah, those were some things that popped off the popped off uh, the chart for speaking me. Speaking of developing, Andy, we're going to have a very bold, beautiful graphic that's going to pop up for this starting next week. My new favorite segment. And we're going to start it off with, with just like a little patter. And then we're going to come in next week with an explosion. How about Andy's dandies, baby? Tell us about it. <laughs> Oh yeah, we've got Andy's dandies. We're gonna look for uh, some, you know, standout performances that you'll see across some games. And I've got four of them for you tonight. There's no set number on this. We're, we're gonna, you know, whatever really jumps out, we'll go with. Uh, we're gonna go back to Thursday night, which was actually now two nights ago. Oh, wow. uh, we're gonna start with Galleon wide receiver, Jacob Chambers, eight catches, 129 yards, three touchdowns in the first half. And that came in the 49-13 win over Winford. Staying into the Thursday night action too, Colonel Crawford running back Connor McMichael, 11 carries, 175 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. And then he also can show his ability to catch the ball too with two catches, 46 yards. How good did Colonel Crawford look? You saw it in the highlights earlier too. You saw it on our uh, channel last night as well. 55-13 win over River. And then you saw the late drive from Hopewell Loudon to get the job done on the road at Cary by the sophomore quarterback, Jacoby Ellis. The, yes. the two quarterback system, not even the main guy, 
he looked so poised leading them to victory on the road going 16 of 23 231 yards two touchdowns and he led that game winning 79 yard drive that you saw here live and free on the oh report and another game you saw here on the oh report northmore quarterback aj bauer 10 of 13 for 321 yards and three touchdowns brian i i'm not great at math but that's that's a pretty good average right that's like 30 yards a pass if my yeah math i don't even need right a calculator for that i just know that's big time <laughs> every, every highlight like shane young broke down when he dropped back to pass <laughs> good things were happening they were getting chunks they were moving from one side of the field to the other and or getting in the end zone pretty much every single snap yeah it was unreal i mean just dropping back throwing it dropping it into the, just the perfect you know basket so you can great. imagine Travis is just so glowing happy. over in the corner. We've turned off all the lights around him, and somehow he's just illuminated. Yeah, yeah that's. I figured all the lights were off on you, too, and it's just the glow of Travis there. Oh, hey. Woo, oh, hey that's now. the glow. Dang, I thought you got outside there in the sunshine is. during the summer, bro. What's up with this? <laughs> eh. I can't get out in the sun. It doesn't end well for me. It doesn't go well for a lot of people, Andy. Uh, it also didn't go well for the OCC, like you mentioned, just two and five tonight. Uh, KMAC, a lot better though, six and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The KMAC looked really impressive tonight. Uh, the MOAC looked, uh, you know, pretty solid too, five and three. I think Galleon's going to be like pretty good this year. What are, what are we thinking? Are they like sneaky dark horse there? Uh, Joshua Banks over here was telling us before that Winford game, he was like, "This is not going to be close." Tiger's going to run them out of the building. The rest of us were like, mm, I don't know. They only got a couple seniors on the team. I know there's some pretty good players, but let them prove something to us because there's a lot of young dudes. I think they might be kind of special. I Until you see it, yeah. only hearing about it only matters so much. But now that we, we got it on wax, we got some highlights, uh, I think that we're probably going to see a whole lot more touchdowns coming out of Tiger Country this year. I agree. Looking forward to, to catching them and watching them uh, continue to develop this season. All right, uh, a couple other conferences that we keep an eye on. Andy, I know that you did all of your homework here. N10, I knew, we got the Eagles. They look great. Uh, yeah. Not, not so much for everybody else, huh? No, I mean, Seneca, you had Seneca East tonight. They looked really yeah. good. Every time I looked up in that first half, it was like there was another, you know, wide open receiver downfield for a big touchdown. So, yeah, Crawford and Seneca East carrying the banner for the N10. But, you know, Kerry loses a tough one at home. Upper had to go into the castle. It didn't end well for them there. And... Yeah, just uh, you know, that's the that's I, you mentioned this on your on your game tonight too. But like this time of the year is so good because you get like, you know, kind of it's kind of like bowl season in college football where you get like conferences going at each other and you kind yes. of get to establish, you know, who uh, is the best of the best playing all these non-conference games. So it's always fun right before you get in the conference season to kind of see which conferences stand out. And in the Firelands Conference, the team that we've all kind of pegged to be the front runner in there, Norwalk St. Paul. And they've done this before here in recent memory where they come yeah. out of the gates, they lose all their non-conference games because, I mean, they, they schedule some whoppers. <laughs> but then once they yeah. start getting into the flow of league play, they typically come out on top. So uh, Firelands Conference also uh, wasn't great tonight. It was not. Uh, but, yeah, I, looking at that score, too, for St. Paul, I was like, am I, am I reading this right? I believe they lost, like, 38 to nothing tonight. And I was like, that can't that can't be. Cool. But uh, that, that's exactly what happened. But uh, Monroeville went on the road at Lakota. They dominated. They played really well. Uh, I think they're going to be one of the favorites out of the uh, Firelands here this, this season. So, yeah, Monroeville, too, I think may, maybe a sneaky pick that could uh, be one of the front runners in that league this year. But, yeah, St. Paul, they, they schedule hard at the beginning of the season. And Crestview as well, Andy, since you were tuning in a little bit, you saw that game, all the busted yeah. coverages. Uh, I, oh. I had a tough time figuring out why Mr. Taylor was so open so many times. I mean, that kid, <laughs> he's a shining star, but at the same time, it seemed like he got a, a, a lot of help from just, like, some schematic mishaps. Yeah, and that's... That's huge too. Like they went in there and did that. Like get they went down early too, I believe, right? Didn't Crestview go up seven nothing? And then it was minute. all Seneca East after that. So yeah, hats off have to hats off to Seneca East for, for pulling that win out on the road and uh it doesn't get any easier for Crestview next week now, does it? Yeah, they they, uh, they got a tough one coming up on Thursday. So if they can somehow bounce back, and I think even just be competitive in that game, it's going to bode really well mm -hmm. for them moving forward. Uh, Travis is doing a little research, I think, on it right now. He, he probably actually just reading the scores, I think, over and over again of the K-Max standings, and he's just like, oh, yeah. 
Oh, what a He'll night. He'll sleep soundly tonight. Six and two. He likes it. Well, Andy, mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and put a bow here on week one. You know, at 1.15 a.m., we're up here. We're doing this thing late, but just a, obviously a, a ton of fun from start to finish. I, I tell you what, when I woke up this morning, it really is. I, I come down the stairs. I was expecting there to be like a, a, a big tree in my living room with a star on top with, with all these presents <laughs> that we get to open up. But it's just a good feeling that football's back, baby. It just, doesn't fall. Just It just hits a little different than, than the rest of the seasons because this America, baby, this is what we do. Yes, and it's been a nice uh, distraction from the slumping Guardians uh, season Ooh. right now. So happy to have uh, football back. Um, maybe some of the, the eyes will shift and then they'll start playing well again. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're back and it's going to go quick. It always does. Fall weather always arrives right when high school football comes around too. It's been beautiful all week. It looks like everyone had a great uh weather tonight at their games too and uh let's go let's go and it, it's not lost on me too i just have to point this out i'm sure adam is the one creating these i see the headlines i see what my lower thirds are yeah. well well I, done. we're just glad that you could join well us done. and we, we just hope that you had the time of your life of course i did always okay? do